What is up my friends? Welcome back to another video and this is the 10th and final part of the Disney Medley Orchestration Breakdown. We've gone through so much. We've talked about how all the core, the core essentials work, um, all the different main sections and uh, the orchestration behind them, the template, everything. And so in this final part, I'm sure you've been curious to know how I mixed and mastered it or just process it in general to make it sound the way it is. And we're gonna dive into that in this video. It's gonna be short and sweet. Um, if you know my workflow, I am quite minimal with my, my mixing um, workflow. So I wanna give that to you and share how I kind of worked on this one in this video. So before we do that though, in case you're interested in my step-by-step -step mixing process, I wanna give you my uh, mixing checklist, my mixing cheat sheet, and it's totally free. So if you click the link below, it'll take you straight there. It's a very, very practical method that you can follow. Um, it doesn't really matter what genre you're mixing, but if you follow these fundamental steps and use the general plugins that are recommended there, then you will have um, a really great template to follow for every single mix you do. So it's totally free. Just check it out in the link below. And it's my uh, gift to you for checking out this video as well. So let's kind of dive into it. Um, if you know my mixing workflow, you know that I enjoy top-down mixing. So this is something I learned from Graham Cochran over at the Recording Revolution a long time ago. And I, it really makes a lot of sense. So basically starting your mix on this stereo out bus or on the master bus, and then working your way down to the smaller groups and the individual tracks that actually need it. This not only saves a lot of time, but it gives you a, a good sounding mix pretty quickly out of the gate. And it also reduces the load of the CPU processing power because you're using less plugins in general. So a, a, a typical approach here would be uh, for the mixer to uh, tweak the individual elements first, you know, and then have it have each instrument sounding good and then finally going all the way up to the master. But I like to do the opposite way around. So what I typically do first, before I actually touch the master fader, I'll go to the instruments that sound a little strange or maybe have a buildup of frequencies in a certain area. And I will apply an EQ to those instruments. So I do some, some cutting of low end, like I'll do a high pass filter for a lot of things that have a lot of excessive room noise. And then I'll, I'll just notch up a little bit of the air or the, the shine that I want to come out a little bit more. So some of these you can see I didn't actually put anything on. Um, I just put it on just in case I wanted to apply something to it. Let's check out the flute here. So you see I cut out the low end. Let's have a listen to what that sounds like. Find the flute somewhere. It'll definitely play something. There you go. So if I take that out. Back in. So it probably sounds slightly thinner when I turn the EQ back on. But I'm really taking out some of that frequency right there. And that's because um, a lot of times when you're working with multiple instruments that share similar frequencies, uh, some instruments need that frequency more than others. So the flute I found was a little excessive here and I, I knew I could afford to take that out. So I notched a bit of that out. You can see about 3 dB. So I left room for other instruments. Maybe it's the violins or something that could take advantage of that space even more. And then here, I just wanted a bit more of the air, you know, in the, in, in the flute there. So each instrument gets a little bit of this treatment, just a bit of cleaning up and all of that. And then I kind of move on to the master bus. So first you apply an EQ, and this is a very general, um, very subtle EQ. So uh, let's hear the mix first. Off. Back on. So here, I'm just taking out a hint of the lows right just a little bit here just a bit of the that boxiness you can hear there and then here i'm nudging up just a little bit of the the air and the high end if let's get a scoop for it here right so just it, it gives a little bit more of a sheen there so that's kind of what i was aiming for here very subtle moves here and then the compressor it's not doing that much but you see the needles moving like half a decibel at most. So just containing the entire mix a little bit more. And the ratio is very light, 1.6 to 1. Threshold is about, you know, minus 22. Uh, makeup gain is half a decibel there as well. So the general idea is 
the amount of gain reduction that's happening, you can apply that same amount of makeup gain to make up that loss in volume there. But generally, this keeps the dynamics slightly more intact, and it's not as uh, wildly different. Uh, so that's the idea of the compressor there. Then I applied a mix centric uh, just to tighten up the overall mix a little bit. So here is it with it on. And then on. It's a little more muddy, a little more cloudy. Turn it on. Here it's a little crispier, a little brighter, right? Makes it shine a little more. Then tone centric, just a little bit of warmth and saturation. Really nice touch there. And then uh, the ozone 9 is my limiter there, so I'm gonna get back to that at the very end. But after I applied these, then I was thinking, okay, now I wanna do a bit of reverb um, for some of the instruments that were too dry at the beginning. So then I applied um, a reverb. I put on East West Spaces 2, and the hall I chose was the San Francisco Hall TSFR 3.4 seconds. And then I basically sent individual instruments over to it. So for example, the choir I thought was a little dry um, from Metropolis Arc, so I, I sent it out. Um, let me see. Yeah, I sent it over to bus one, which is the reverb bus. As you can see, the input here is bus one. And then I just dialed it up until I felt it was wet enough. So let's hear what it sounds like on its own. Maybe I'll find uh... and then without the send, little extra wetness, a little extra depth there. Not super obvious, right? But it does lend a little bit of extra juice to it there. So I kind of went through and and uh, you know dialed in some of the reverb for some of those individual instruments. Honestly, I didn't want anything very obvious. Like I could have applied like Valhalla Room to all of the different instruments and all that, but um, that would just kind of destroy the existing like room information that's already baked into the samples. So I just wanted uh, the reverb to be very, very subtle there. And so after I did that, I was pretty happy with the overall sound. Um, so then what I did was I put the Ozone 9 Elements plugin on, uh, did the Master Assistant, so it gave me kind of a default um, analysis of the EQ sweep. And so it wanted to boost back up some of the lows and boost up a bit of the highs. So I was totally fine with that. This little noise here comes from the mix centric and the tone centric plugins from Waves. Uh, I wish there was a feature to turn that off, but honestly, it, it's okay in this context. And then it just took out a bit of the mids here. So let's have a listen to that. Um, Right there, they just took a bit of that, that, that mid reg register. And then here, the imager, I just, I, I usually like to do this. I, I kind of widen the mix by about 20. Um, usually, every mix that I do, I just like a bit of extra width. And then on the maximizer, I kind of upset the ceiling at minus 0 0.2 and then brought the threshold down to minus 15.7 to bring up the volume a little bit. And that's generally it. So yeah, without the without the limiter, it sounds like this. Super, super soft, you can hear. And with it, it brings it all the way up. You've got the serial imaging and you got the EQ there too. So this is a really cool plugin, I really like it. I believe I got it free with the purchase of another plugin. Uh, so yeah, if you, if you wait for a special deal for this, you can definitely get, get elements for a really good price. But yeah, that's it, that really is it. So just to recap, um, top down mixing, you know, have your EQ, your compressor, then some, you know, whatever processing you wanna apply on it, maybe some saturation, some compression, whatever, you can do that. The last plugin is usually gonna be your limiter or your, uh, you know, your mastering plugin of choice. Make sure that if you wanna do group tracks with the different instruments, you set that up as well under auxiliary tracks. In this case, I didn't feel like I needed to do it. I just made one auxiliary track and put a reverb on it and then sent individual uh, tracks over to it to add some of the reverb in there and dial it up as needed. And then before doing the actual mix, I applied EQs to most of the tracks and you know just took out a lot of the room information, maybe bumped up some of the, the highs that I wanted to hear more of. And then I let the rest of the, uh, the, the I let the uh, uh, Ozone 9 elements do its job. So that's it. 
Hopefully that makes sense. And yeah, that's kind of my workflow. And oh yeah, I'll quickly show you my my automation as well. Oh, before I do that, you might be noticing that the these um, these faders are all in different positions here, right? Notice these ones are all at the same level, but these are all the MIDI tracks. So once I bounce them all to audio, these are the ones I mix from. So I always start from a static mix. Like I drag all the audio faders down to zero, all like to negative infinity, and then I'll bring up the lead element first, set it out, up at around, let's say minus 20 dB. Then I'll bring everything up to kind of sit around that. And I'll kind of start with the loudest section as well, because I want the mix to sound pretty good with all the instruments combined or you know in the mix, as many of them as possible. Then I can go to the quieter sections and then kind of tweak as needed. But generally I like to start from the louder sections. So if you look at the strings, you can see how violins one here is kind of in the middle. That's the one I set up first. And then these are the ones I kind of set up around violence one and I carried on with the rest of the audio tracks there. So volume balance is really the most important aspect of mixing. It doesn't really matter what processing you're applying. If your balances are not good, then you're pretty much um, screwed. So you wanna be careful. And yeah, that's that's really, really important too. So yeah, that's generally it. Once I get the balances, then I'll do the, the top-down mix, make sure the EQ is pretty good. Make sure the compressor is just holding in the dynamics slightly, just you know, juices it up a bit. Then apply my processing plugins, and once I'm happy with the reverb and everything, then I'll apply the Limber plugin, and that's it. Hopefully that makes sense. Thank you so much for watching. Again, if you are interested in my full mixing process, I want to give you that guide, my mixing checklist and cheat sheet. So download it for free in the description box below. It'll take you straight there. It's my gift to you for checking out this video today. I'll catch you in the next one. Thank you so much for watching this series and coming along on the ride with me. And I can't wait to see you in another video very, very soon. See you then. Bye-bye.